Tullis, the winner of the 2010 Golden Spur Award. Bill is many things, a conservation pioneer, husband, dad, good neighbor, respected advisor, a military hero. But most of all, Bill Tullis wants to be known as, remembered as, quite simply, a rancher. I'm proud of it. I think it's something to be proud of, especially when you get other peers that sort of recognize you, you really feel good, honored. But perhaps it's not simple at all. In the case of Bill Tullis, we're talking a lifetime as a rancher, a lifetime in which thousands of people have been touched and influenced by this quiet, thoughtful man of dignity and common sense. He served on our board uh, for seven years. Uh, served uh, three of those years, I guess, as vice president. Uh, was an outstanding leader, uh, went on to serve uh, with the Texas Beef Council and served as chairman of the Texas Beef Council. And from, from every angle that I've ever witnessed uh, Bill Tullis in his leadership roles, whether it be uh, with uh, the soil and water conservation folks or whether it be the, the Beef Council or whether it be Farm Bureau, uh, he's just done an outstanding job in, in the leadership role. And that's just Bill Tullis. He is a, he is a leader and, and a stand-up guy. He certainly has been a, a champion of uh, production agriculture and, and sheep and goat industry uh, here in Texas and, and uh, nationally. The journey of Bill Tullis' life began in 1924 in Stevens County, Texas, in the community of Caddo near Breckenridge. When he was a year old, the family moved to the ranch close to the community of Arden near San Angelo. His dad had bought it in 1919, and then my dad bought it from the state in 1929. And he bought it without a penny, but he had a good friend that was a banker and loaned him all the money. And whether his, the banker insisted or he insisted or what, my mother, I never knew and my mother never knew. But he took insurance to cover the note for the whole amount of this ranch. He paid one premium, passed away. So we, we wouldn't, and that was 1931, we would have never have had this ranch if it hadn't been for that insurance policy. Bill's father passed away when the young boy was only eight. The ranch was leased to family friends until Bill graduated high school. He began his ranching career, but it was soon interrupted by faraway events over which he had no control. America was at war. Bill left the ranch to serve his country and the ranch was leased back to the same people. I had a deferment, I wasn't gonna to go to the service. And I had a widowed mother and operating a ranch, but I, I just couldn't stand it. All of my cousins were going and I volunteered for the Army Air Corps. I went to instructor school, became a BT-13 basic flying instructor, flew a few months and I'm sure I was complaining and this and that. And one day the captain calls me in and says, Lieutenant, I think you are very happy here. I said, well, you're, you're just right. This wasn't what I envisioned. He said, well, I can cure your problem. So he sent me to a B-17 combat crew. Never been in a twin-engine airplane. Never been, certainly never a four-engine airplane. They sent me to a combat crew, and eight weeks later, I'm in England, flying a co-pilot on a B-17. In the right seat of a B-17, Bill Tullis flew missions over France and Germany. At war's end, he retrieved prisoners of war from liberated Nazi Germany. Like many others among America's courageous warriors of that generation, he was disturbed by what his eyes had seen. I guess I finally realized how mean human beings can be to other human beings. I never thought people could do that. I just I didn't realize people could be that mean. Young Bill Tullis brought the scars of war home with him. After a year, the lease ran out, and he was again what he wanted to be, a rancher. He took up the work eagerly, with the intent of leaving the ranch only when he had to, keeping to himself as much as possible. He and Marjorie had two children, George and Carolyn. The family and the ranch would be his life but he found that others turned to him as a leader. The community and the industry he loved needed him. The turning point in Bill's thinking came at a Farm Bureau meeting 
There was a man there from, named Dale Parr, and he was speaking to, I was young at that time, he was speaking to young ranchers and uh, said, you know, don't forget, more things happen outside your fence line than inside it to work, to influence your life. So I finally began to realize there was other, there was organizations we had to join. We had to join together with other people and try to do something as collectively so we would have know where we were in the future. So I became interested in Farm Bureau and that's when I joined the Farm Bureau. Once in Farm Bureau, he served for decades on the Tom Green County Farm Bureau Board. He was county president and a state director for seven years. And he became vice president of Texas Farm Bureau. I always thought that he had a vision that he could see in the future if some of the rest of them could. He could tell you know, what the result might be of some move that we made. He was, he was a real asset to the Board of Texas Farm Bureau. From the day that Bill returned to ranching after the war, he began another battle. Control of the relentless brush that threatened to consume the precious water he needed to survive as a rancher. In fighting that battle, he became a recognized leader, a pioneer in soil conservation in West Texas. His son-in-law, Gary McGee, was there for much of that fight. You think of Bill Tulloth, I think of conservation work. And to me, there's no one that's a better steward of our large land than what Bill Tulloth has been. And anytime I'm traveling in West Texas and I see grass growing and where someone's done some work, he just automatically pops in my mind as being involved or by setting an example that someone's done this. He's noted for his conservation work on his ranch. He's taken the ranch that uh, was probably uh, a scrubby ranch, uh, had, had a lot of mesquite on it, and he's made it a lifetime goal of his is to clean that ranch up and take all the brush off of it. And if you've ever seen his ranch, it has a, it's a beautiful ranch. To me, it's been something that I've been very proud of, just knowing him, that he can do that work. And in West Texas, water is a very uh, precious gift. We came in here with a dozer and tried to pick up each individual tree or plant or say whatever it was. We pulled the tree up, left a hole where it was, put grass seed in that hole, and hope that it will recover. And it will with time and rest, and proper grazing management. And there, of course, we missed a few number of small plants out there. Within five years of the original work is done, we will come in here and treat all of these regrowth. With, by chem, with chemical by hand. We find that's more practical than try to come back with the dozer. And besides, if you come back the second time with the dozer, sometimes you just tear your land up too much. You don't really want to disturb a lot of native grass because we have a lot of good native grass that we would like to see stay. You'll see springs that are seeps, I call them springs, start flowing that you probably, most people didn't even know they were there. They were there years ago. You get enough underground water, they start showing back up. Daddy's always been uh, family oriented. You know, God, family, and land are his priorities. Always wanted to be um, learning, always interested in trying to, to find new ways, develop new ideas. And as you say, he's developed a lot of them that didn't work and tried something else. But he was never afraid to say, you know, that just didn't work very well. I'm going to try something else. He's always. Uh, had the nerve to, to try something new when, when he thought it might, might be the answer. Uh, always kept my brother and I involved in the ranch. Always hoped we'd come back and be part of it. He gave Gary and I the opportunity to come back and he'd take us under his wing and try to help us ranch. It was a real blessing. That calm attitude and, and uh, devotion and, and knowing that things are gonna be positive later on he encourages people and he does try new things. Conservationist, stockman, father, friend, teacher, and leader. These words all describe Bill Tullis. His footprints in the soil of West Texas are deep and wide. And his legacy is that of a rancher. He's never wanted anything else. He says at age 87, he's still learning about ranching and conservation. And he has a great passion for all of agriculture working together. I've said it a lot of times that, you know, there's lots of things that we can't ever agree on. We're not gonna fall out over them and we're gonna work around them. 
You and I may not see eye to eye, but we can work together. And that's the way it's got to be among all segments of agriculture.